I'd like to welcome you to this week's report. Today is uh, Thursday, April 11th. Another beautiful day here in Southern California. The bad news is that that's going to end pretty quickly. As has been the case in the last uh, couple of months here, uh, <clears throat> it's be windy again on the weekend and maybe rain. I don't know why this weather pattern is hitting us as continuously as it is, but it seems like we have good weather all week or decent weather all week, followed by another storm on the weekend. Um, I'm hoping this will be the last one, but uh, <clears throat> who knows. Uh, tomorrow, Friday looks decent, but there's going to be some south wind. And uh, they say wind out of the south, fish close their mouth. They're not lying. <clears throat> Can often make for pretty tough fishing. <clears throat> but the weather should be fishable. I don't think it's going to affect cod fishing and stuff like that. But might make for slow bass fishing or other game fish. Uh, come Saturday, we have a storm coming in. It's going to be some wind, going to be some rain. We're going to have some clearing wind Sunday through Monday. Uh, <clears throat> early part of next week looks windy on the outer islands, but calm along the coast. Basically anything inside of Catalina or the Channel Islands is kind of the wind line. And uh, that kind of <clears throat> moves in and out throughout the week. But it looks pretty decent through next weekend, at least through Saturday, which is as far out as the uh, forecast goes this, uh, right now. And again, that long of a forecast, it's... Uh, very unpredictable, but looks like we're moving into a calmer pattern. Uh, wind at the Outer Islands, Clemente, Nick, Rosa, Miguel, uh, but decently fishable at the other places. So uh, that's the good news. And uh, hopefully things change for the better between now and the weekend. I don't think so. Looks like uh, we're on track for what they've been predicting all week is still holding true. Uh, so I'd imagine it's probably going to be blown out. Uh, the good news is there's a lot of good fishing happening in between storms. So if you're lucky enough to get out during the week, you can uh, get in on uh, some of this action or hopefully uh, <clears throat> after this weekend we'll be in a pattern where that won't matter anymore. I apologize, I just stepped on something sharp and I'm barefoot here in the garage. Um, let's head to the Channel Islands. The uh, three coordinated full day boats out of Santa Barbara, I think it's the uh, Coral Sea uh, has been fishing Santa Rosa, I would imagine, based on the grade of fish I'm, they're catching. Regardless, they're getting a lot of nice big halibut. Um, also some quality rockfish up there. Uh, they had one really good trip this week with a bunch of really quality halibut. Yeah, but, you know, the rockfish steady. I think the halibut's kind of hit and miss. I know the uh, gray light out of Ventura, their charter boat out of there, has been fishing the island as well. Has been getting some halibut along with some nice link cod and Rock cod, good sized reds, and you know, if you don't know the, uh, well the limit this year is going to be two reds, they haven't instituted the new law yet, so you can still keep four reds if you go out, which is good news for the guys up there, because between four reds and uh, one copper rockfish or whatever you can keep, it's a, uh, once it goes down to two, you're going to be throwing back a lot of stuff to keep something much less desirable, but in the meantime, uh, you can keep your four reds, just stay out of the cow cod conservation area, and uh, I'll keep you guys updated when that law goes into effect. Uh, my friend Pat, who also works in the Aloha Spirit, took a skip out to Santa Cruz Island the other day, and he had a couple of nice sea bass, as well as a, a nice halibut, and he's getting all those on those uh, those big flukes. I, I think the Redemption makes them, and I think Z-Man makes them, but that's the flukes they've been catching fish up there on for the last few years. Looks like that bite's happening. Uh, once the weather stabilizes and we go into the next full moon cycle, I'm hoping to see more of those sea bass start to show up for the sport boats as well. That'd be uh, definitely be a good thing. Um, but yeah, this weekend's going to be windy up there and raining. And early next week's going to be windy up there and just windy. But uh, private boaters, you should be good by the middle of next week, hopefully. And into the next weekend might be a great opportunity to go up there and catch some fish. Catch your four reds while you can. Um, so Catalina, I, I have no coverage from Clemente or Nick or Santa Barbara Island this week. Uh, Catalina hasn't been a lot of coverage there either. My friend Gary Reyes went over on Sunday and uh, had pretty good calico bass fishing. Uh, caught a lot of fish on A-rigs and things like that. And, uh, well, things like that, A-rigs. And also said he had some shots, some real nice fish on the weedless swim baits that uh, didn't convert. But, you know, coming off that big storm we had last week and the uh, <clears throat> the swell associated with that uh, sounded like pretty good fishing. I fished a wall that day, uh, or Saturday, and in Inner Harbor, and it was quite a bit of swell. So, 
glad to see that laid back down. I was actually out today and it's very calm again. But uh, the boat's fishing over there, you know, they're having good uh, rock fishing. I know the freelance been going over there, loading up on big reds. Um, the Amigo, when I'm assuming they fished here, they might have fished Clemente. I don't have uh, the facts. They had six yellows and some bonita to go along with, uh, with the rock fish. And again, those are those small yellows that we talked about a couple weeks ago. And I, like I said, that'd be great if they were a sign of uh, El Nino, but I think they, it might just be a fluke that they're, uh, that they're biting there. Um, so yeah, not a lot of island coverage. I don't think there'll be much this weekend. Uh, I was hoping to go today to go fish Cat or Clemente, but we ended up getting a late start and stayed local. Uh, before we get into that, you know, uh, guys been doing, you know, this, when the weather's bad, you can get out during the week, you know, do some nighttime fishing. Uh, my friend Gary Reyes and Mike Stemmeridge went out a couple days ago, and it uh, looks like they just fished Spotties in Alamitos Bay and Long Beach Harbor. Looks like they had quite a few fish. That's always a fun option if, you know, if it's too rough to fish the outside, just, you could mess around in there fishing that riprap and stuff and uh, catch both sand bass, calicos and spotties. That's what we did on uh, on Saturday during the day after we tried to fish the wall we went back in the Long Beach Harbor. And we probably had <clears throat> maybe 15 or 20 bass for three of us. A mix of spotties, calicos and sand bass. No real giants but you know something, something to pull on when nothing else is happening. Water temp was way down, it's down to 58 degrees again and then 57, 58 after the last storm today it was 59 to 60 on the Newport pipe. Um, more nighttime action. Uh, my friend uh, Mike Hines, who fished that Redondo, got a real nice calico the other night. Um, he said he was fishing swim jigs along the uh, the break wall there in Redondo and uh, had pretty slow fishing. He was just trying to ho hope to catch them and throw out a, a hookup bait and ended up with a real nice bass. On the hookup bait? Buddy. Ooh, at least a 24 inch. That was fucking big, dude. Uh, so good for him. He went out again today, I think, and uh, fished deeper and said he just caught some uh, cabas on and stuff like that. So definitely not wide open <clears throat> up there, but there are fish to be caught. I know the sport boats up there, like the New Del Mar, they're strictly fishing rockfish right now. But if you're going to fish those artificial reefs, you could probably go get some bass. Um, so speaking of uh, reefs, uh, Bobby Martinez went out on Saturday, braved that horrible swell that I avoided. Got a real nice sand bass, uh, close to 10 pounder out of Long Beach here. I think he's probably pre-fishing for the SBS tournament that's coming up. Um, yeah, I went, at, I went out today with uh, Jimmy and his son Briggs and uh, we got a late start. Uh, Briggs works at night as a valet park, parking guy at uh, Newport Yacht Club or something. So he was uh, wanted to sleep in a bit. So we didn't even leave Jimmy's house till at eight o'clock. And our plan was to uh, catch some bass or fish for bass in the morning and then run offshore to see if we could find that local bluefin. There was some more reports about that stuff being seen. And uh, with the water temp cleaning up after and warming up after last week and I was ready to go out and take another look. Uh, we ended up running it just sucked in fog all day though and that uh, it would have been a waste of time to go out and even try and look for tuna if you can't see more than a quarter mile. But uh, the nice thing is that fog kept the bass biting at the pipe, Newport pipe throughout the morning and uh, a lot of times that bite will be good early but then once that sun gets up high they, the bass will shut off and uh, it was an interesting bite today. Uh, <clears throat> A lot of bait on the pipe and a lot of it's really big sardines and those fish are chasing that stuff around and if you're not on that sardine you're not catching any bass but once you find that sardine it's biting every cast seven eight followers on every fish really nice grade of calicos and sand bass mixed um, but you know with that fog and it's well and nothing with the fog it's hard to see signs of birds and bait so you kind of we had to get in the area and just kind of slowly drive around looking for fish in the meter looking for birds uh, cormorants were a big deal today we saw cormorants that were diving you could just pull up to them start casting and catch fish um, 
otherwise it was they were they were all on on birds and even if if they were not always directly on the pipe you know the pipe is like a starting point but those bass will travel a far distance from it if they're chasing bait so you don't have to be on top of to catch them you just have to be where the bait is and uh what was interesting today is you needed the noisy bait to catch fish we were you know trying jerk shads uh swim baits something like that uh no bites on those. We had a couple early, but you know, just smaller sand bass. But all of our bites came on crankbaits. Uh, Jimmy and Briggs were fishing the uh, Evergreen CR16. I threw a uh, uh, Old Rapallo Risto Wrap 9 today. This is not the bait I had, but it's very similar in color and size. And um, the trick was today is you didn't want the bait to go too deep because these bass are feeding on the surface. Well, you know, we're fit sitting anywhere from, you know, 40 to 50 feet of water, but these bass are up feeding near the surface. And one of the nice things about a bait like the Risto Wrap or the CR-16, they don't dive that deep. So if you don't burn them down like you're doing when you're trying to fish spot, you just get them down deep. Just cast them out, you start whining. That bait's going to run, you know, 10, 12 feet below the surface. And, uh, and because of the overcast, the off-color water, they were calling in the bass and you know you'd stop and go retrieve especially with the wrist wrap when you burn it down because it's balsa when you pause it it floats up backwards and that so i just burn it pause burn it pause and it'd be on the long pause i'd be getting the bites and um a lot of guys that crank they want to crank 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 you just keep the thing down but Today, they didn't, they didn't want that. They don't need the baits running at 15, 18 feet. They just want to bait that they can hear and then they can find, and then when it pauses, they're biting it. So, once we got the right bait and the right presentation down, it was really good. But you'd have to drive around, find a spot, you catch three or four fish, have to drive around, find another spot, catch three or four fish. We had, you know, I don't know, 25, 30 fish, uh, maybe more than that. And uh, mixed calicos and sand bass, a couple of really nice sand bass. Jimmy got a couple of jumbos. Uh, I think the biggest one he got was probably close to eight pounds. Um, Briggs had a really nice calico, had a bunch of doubles and stuff. I got a, a few clips of video here uh, that kind of kind of show. I don't remember if I have three or four video clips, so that uh, bear with me and enjoy. She's coming up on it right now. Is that bait right there? Looks like it. All right, go ahead and spot log it, Jimmy. There you go. Snagged it. Right where they're supposed to be. What the fuck? It's a real one. <laughs> nice. Looks like it. But he's got some actually dra got drag on me. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> nice. That was that caught right there. Sonar. <laughs> I need that forward fishing sonar. Wow, he's got a giant sardine in his Hold it up for the camera there, buddy.
There we go. That's a good one. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. I can see him. Look at that. Good grief, buddy. I know. Giant. Giant. That's calculated to be a beast. I can make five casts before Jesus, you get them up. I can see it already. Oh, good lord. Oh, Look at that bastard. <laughs> oh, boy. Jesus. I don't think you can bounce that one. <laughs> that is not a bouncer. <laughs> what is that, seven pounds, eight pounds? That's a big one. I breathe, bud. That is a huge sand bass. For that afterwards. <laughs> On the crate Bobby, bait. Bobby Martinez bath. Yeah. Speak and break your last CR 16. That would pull back. <laughs> Taking drag. Yeah, that's up in the sweet spot. Get ready, Briggs. Drop it right down there now. Nice nice calico. I'm fucking scared of these things. <laughs> Oh, nice one. Yeah. Yo, wrist a wrap. Oh, it took my front hooks off. Did it? We're having hook problems here today. I got it. There it is. Just my rubber. Cast. There's another one right off the bow, too, and there's one right behind us. Got one? I missed him. Got him. Got him. Come on. Now he's on. He's got him. He got him. Good. He got him. That's a good rod, huh? Yeah. Oh, he did a good one. Oh, yeah, he does. Good. Mission accomplished. Got us. We hooked one right here. Calico bass. The CR 16. Already. Oh, nice Calgo. Holy shit, Muggs. Can you grab that thing? You want me to try to get it? Want me to bounce him? No. Stick your hand in his mouth. Put a little slack out. You got him? Yeah. Put, put your reel in free school. Free school. Okay, there you go. Don't get that shit in my face. Hold it up in front of the camera. Yeah. Good Let boy. Yeah, so about the time that the uh, tide topped out around noon, that bait kind of disappeared, moved off the pipe, and uh, everything kind of shut down, and we just, you could tell, it's like a light switch, it's like yeah, we're not going to catch any more fish. You drive for 300 yards, you don't see a, a scrap of bait, you know, that uh, things are different. So we just called it early, I got home, got to take a nap, and uh, before doing the video here, so that was nice. Um, 
Yeah, so cod fishing along the beach is good too. Bobby, after he caught that big sand bass on Saturday, went back out and fished deep water cod on a Sunday and uh, loaded up on nice chilies and uh, Floridas, stuff like that. I mean, I might do that tomorrow with Matt, I don't know. I was gonna go early tomorrow before the wind, but now Matt has to work a double tonight at work, so he wants to go a little bit later. So I'm gonna see what the weather does in the morning before I hook up the boat. Maybe just fish bass in the south wind, which is gonna suck, or try and fish cod in the south wind, which will be very difficult, 900 to 1,000 feet of water. But uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, you know, I skipped San Diego last week and I had uh, someone ask a question about it. There's really not a whole lot going on down there right now. You can go catch sand bass, calicos on the reefs. Uh, there's been some running in yellowtail now and then, but when it's there, it's just, it's just a, you know, gangbang of boats. And, um, you know, for me, I, don't, I, I couldn't possibly want to deal with spending a whole day getting frustrated by other boats to maybe get a, a low percentage shot of catching yellowtail on the surface iron. A lot funner ways of fishing, in my opinion. Uh, but hey, teach their own. Um, there's still halibut biting in, uh, in the uh, San Diego Bay. Uh, my friend Thomas Moran has just been roping them in there. Uh, I was going to download some pictures of uh, some of the fish he's been getting in there, but I forgot to, so you just have to take my word on it. But uh, yeah, Coronado Islands, it's uh, mostly rockfish. The boats are seeing yellows now and then, but it's really not getting any sport boat coverage, so we really don't have an idea what's happening down there. Uh, and for a private boater to go down there and try and locate yellows at this time of year, it's gonna be a pretty low percentage play. You're gonna need sonar. You're gonna need to look around, stumble into them, catch them on a yo-yo jig probably. I, I doubt you can go down there and be up foaming around or riding on the surface on a slow troll mackerel. It might be, but I, I really don't think that's gonna be happening right now. Um, the boats out of San Diego fishing tuna have been struggling. They are basically MIA right now. I don't know what happened. Uh, they lost track of them and uh, I don't think they're gone. I think they're just somewhere that they're not expecting them to be. I know that there's, uh, there's fish up in US waters, but I don't think that's the volume of fish that were down there. Uh, the Independence, one of the long range boats, got off a five day, got back from a five day this week and they did not catch a single tuna or yellowtail the entire trip. Uh, that's pretty remarkable right there. Caught some rockfish and halibut and bass, but couldn't find a tuna, couldn't find a yellowtail anywhere. Um, the good news is that the boats in Ensenada have uh, gotten on the yellowtail recently again, and the guys at the Punta Bonda have been doing consistently well. They also had some really good barracuda fishing the other day, and I, I'm really hoping that, that barracuda, the early season fish that's gonna slide up into US waters, and uh, San Diego is often one of the first places it shows up. That'd be great for the sport boat fleet. And uh, interestingly enough, after San Diego, before it gets to Long Beach, a lot of times they'll show up in Oxnard. So I don't think those fish come up the coast. I think they come out of deeper water and come into the coast. <coughs> we'll see how that goes. It's been a few years since we've had a good, good uh, barracuda season, but that would definitely be appreciated, I'm sure, by all the uh, three quarter boats. So, yeah. Uh, Spring fishing, it's good. I mean, the bass fish diet today was really good. Uh, the guys in Edson are doing really good. I know uh, Pat up in the Channel Isles had a great day there, but you have to be out on the right day, and uh, it's not always gonna be great. But if you, you know, look for good conditions and uh, put yourself in the right place, you always have a shot at fish for a private boater. Just you know, pay attention to what's going on. Don't just say, hey, you know, this is where they should be. Go look for the bait fish. And you know, I can guarantee those yellows are catching down there. The sea bass are catching up north. The bass we're catching today, they are not just on spots. They are swimming around and chasing the bait fish that are there. And you know, uh, tailor your offering to what you're seeing for, you know, if the fish are deep for yellows, fish a yo-yo jig, if they're a pie fish, surface iron. When it comes to bass fish, if the water's dirty, try a noisy bait like a crankbait. Um, if they're feeding on small bait, you know, like anchovies versus sardines, adjust your offering accordingly, either match the hatch or do something that's gonna stand out. Uh, you know, if you're fishing the islands, look for areas that look different than uh, the rest of the water for places that might hold sea bass or halibut. Uh, yeah, it's basically all just all the stuff I talk about all the time and I'm gonna try in future videos here this year to give a little more theory when I can. Uh, as far as that kind of stuff goes. But uh, yeah, I think that's about it for today. But I hope you guys have a good weekend and 
check the weather before you fish.